I, th I think we were, I was in my 8th standard when I came back to Chennai. I was for a brief while, I, for a brief while we lived in Chennai during my 5th standard. Then my father was a naval officer and we had gone to Vishakhapatnam. We came back here in the 8th standard and I think it was 77 or something like that. And it was a time where, you know, Pallavan Transport Corporation was the only way one could travel. So we lived in Raja Namgulipuram and I studied in IIT Central School. So one had to change two or three buses to get to school. And one would go to Adair and then take an IIT bus and uh, go right in. So for somebody, you know, living in a city of Chennai and then traveling to a thing which looks like a mini forest inside IIT, and then after that, um, you know, the highly academic environment in the school uh, was like, um, it was really fantastic, you know, seeing deer and things like that in your, in your schoolyard. It was probably the most beautiful school to go to in Chennai, was the IIT Central School, and I was lucky to study there. And um, the journey always had to cross the Adya River, and um, the river was wide, and you could see catamarans uh, and sometimes people fishing on them. And um, I remember going past Gandhi Nagar, there used to be these big trees and almost all the houses on Gandhi Nagar were these big bungalows. Now we don't see most of them, they become houses. But the trees are still there and um, uh, then you know, the Buckingham Canal you would cross and then go towards IIT. I think that whole stretch, there was uh, like, it, the thing has completely changed because there was um, and one went back later when I joined the Film Institute also, I went towards Taramani. So my life has been pretty much about going from the Raja Namalipuram to south to either to IIT Central School or to the Film Institute in Taramani. And that entire place is very green and beautiful part of uh, Chennai. So it was amazing uh, just living in Chennai and growing up. It was warm, but it was a less crowded city at that time. Yeah, I mean, many years back, uh, we, we, I used to be uh, in school fascinated by, there's a highly, uh, you know, everybody was trying to get into engineering and things like that, so, but in school I used to be a quizzer and uh, so while going for the geological survey of India quiz, we ended up studying about geology of Chennai. And then there was this story about how it, there was snow in Madras or something like that. So we couldn't believe it, it was so hot most of the time. How could ever that happen? And there was a story in a uh, volcano blowing up in, in, um, in Indonesia and um, uh, there was a massive cloud cover and the temperatures plummeted. So there's this story that um, ice was uh, and snow was in Chennai. So it's a, I don't know how far it's true, but it sounds great because it was in the papers. I think it's in some paper mentioned. So, uh, so there was always this dream that oh, will a volcano blow up somewhere and will it become cool in Chennai again? I mean, it's, it's only a temporary phenomenon because it's for dust cutting off solar radiation for a certain period of time. But what I'm trying to say is that that curiosity about the past as well as about science and uh, the geology of uh, Chennai was always fascinating. Many years later, you know, when I was reading a book on, on Chennai, it was about, um, it's called The Great Arc. It's about the great triangulation arc that uh, experiments which started out of Chennai, which is about mapping the sea level and, uh, and then going across India in the process of uh, the cartographic mapping of India. And the first triangulation was done between um, Elliot's Beach, the sea, and St. Thomas Mount and the race course um, uh, flagstaff. So to think that you could actually see St. Thomas Mount from Elliot's Beach was another thing which is like, wow, okay, is that possible? So you always get curious because Chennai is beautiful because you're seeing two rivers or three rivers and then there's this Buckingham Canal going across. Had we preserved the Buckingham Canal and but I probably had a really beautiful city and if we could have maintained the waterways. That's one thing that I feel we should still try and, and get those rivers working back in Chennai. Yeah, I think uh, Chennai has a very vibrant music scene. I mean, people who live around Raja Anumadpuram or uh, Mailapur would probably say that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one kind of music. 
music in, in the area around Kapali temple uh, that would be we call the Carnatic music zone. But if you go to Perambur, you know, you had a great sense of jazz and uh, rock music and things like that. And then you would have, you go to North Madras, you would have a lot of Ghana and stuff like that. Then you go to Kaurumbakam, you have a whole bunch of musicians from all over India coming in and playing for the film music. So uh, within a city, I mean, you had these also these old temples where you can see the Nadasaram artists playing. So I think, and I remember many years back, even going to OTA and listening to uh, the bands uh, playing, and there used to be polo matches uh, uh, on that just outside Katipara, the big polo ground, which is now converted to a uh, to a, a golf course. But that time, you could see that, and they would play these uh, incredible military bands. So you just thinking about the fact that there were military bands playing here and those military bands is what Dikshita heard to make the Nodu Sahityam. So Chennai had a very strong western classical music background and there was Handel Manuel and the uh, choir at the St. Andrews Kirk. So you had this diverse music in Chennai and I don't think any other city has been so blessed with having so many types of music here. and. That's why we have produced probably some of the great musicians and I was in some ways lucky that um, in my films you keep on seeing music as a kind of an important aspect of it but it's also what it, the city did to this. My mother was a good singer and my father felt that she was wasting her time uh, being a you know, naval housewife so he got a transfer and came to Chennai. But unfortunately in three months time he had a heart attack and he died. My mother was young, we were young. And uh, it was music which sort of literally saved our family, you know, we could have broken down, my mother could have gone um, sad and depressed, but she saw music as something which you have to be in the present, when you sing you're right in the present, you have to be in beat, you have to be in pitch and that sort of liberated our family in some ways. So it has a recurring motive in my films, whether it is Kajol singing or whether it's Aishwarya singing or whether it's Peter searching for his drum. Um, Human beings are looking for music to redeem themselves and <laughs> find solace in keeping families together. I mean, it's just what I experienced. And in this potpourri of this great musical crucible, which is Chennai, is the fact that when I was joining the institute and I, I, I would go to Prasad Studios to learn how to work the steady cam, there was a time when Sri Lalaja was right in his peak. And um, some of the great musicians from Bombay would come in awe. Hari Prasad Chaurasi had to play with L.A. Raja. And Mr. L.A. Raja's achievement was so fantastic. And Prasad Studios had had all the great, all the languages people coming to record there. And it was amazing to see how much respect a man could endow with, like get, you know. And then when we started making music, we, we had Dilip who became A.R. Rahman, who used to do our tracks in, in advertising commercials and then we went on to doing music together. So we saw this big transition in, in music in which happened in Chennai and some of the greatest people uh, came out of Chennai. Um, so music in Chennai is very much interlinked. In 1639 Francis Day and Andrew Cobin or somebody creating this little city of trading and um, 50 years before they went and created Calcutta. It was a really long time back. And to think that um, the city was created even before Isaac Newton was born, it sort of tells you how it's like when the world was changing that the city was created. So I think it's an uh, incredible feeling that uh, the city is not really a medieval city, but a city created for trading, but has become a city where people come to study, they respect, and uh, the kind of people uh, come here for medical treatment from all over the world. It's the leather capital, it's also the software kind of center. But what really differentiates Chennai or Madras is, of course the rivers are there, it's flat, it's got a, the cleanest beach, but it's also the people. No other place with the whole stadium stand up and clap for Pakistan like we do. Because we love our cricket, we love it. and. Um, we will appreciate a good game even if we lose it and we'll be uh, civilized enough. So Chennai, the civilized city, I love, love it and I'm really proud to be here. And happy birthday Chennai. I'm Rajiv Menon, made of Chennai.